So what have we been talking about? Adam and Eve. So we talked about the creation, we talked about the temptation, we talked about the punishment and how God punishes for the sake of saving us. However, what we didn't talk about is what happens immediately after. So he punished them with those three things. He gave them clothes and he sent them out of the garden. They weren't allowed to live in the garden anymore because they couldn't be close to the tree of life, is what it says. Because if they ate from the tree of life, then they might live together, they might live forever, even though they were in sin, even though they were destroyed. So that would have been bad. So they were cast out of the garden and they had to live outside where it was hard to grow food and where all of life was difficult. This world, we know this world, right? We're familiar. Who knows what happens next? It's a sad story. Not yet, not yet, not an angel. But that's right, there is an angel that keeps them out. There's an angel with a sword that guards the gate and won't let them go back into the garden, that's true. But then what happens? What's the next Bible story? It's about Cain and Abel. Who knows the story of Cain and Abel? Which of you are, have a brother? Okay. This is what happens when brothers don't get along. So the story goes like this. Adam and Eve had two sons. Cain was the older and Abel was the younger. And as they grew up, they took on different jobs. Cain was a farmer. He grew crops and he took care of plants and he harvested the grain and whatever else. Abel was a shepherd. He took care of sheep and goats. Now, the thing was, God, when he made clothes for Adam and Eve, he also showed them how to make sacrifice. And they had to take an animal, a perfect animal without any flaw, and kill it and burn it on an altar as a sacrifice, as an offering to God. We'll talk another time about why sacrifices. Maybe even next time, because this is kind of important. So it was time for Cain and Abel to bring their sacrifices. And they both brought from what they worked on. So Cain brought grain and he tried to burn it on the altar and give it to God. And Abel, as he was supposed to, brought a sheep and he offered that on the altar. And God liked Abel's offering and he didn't accept Cain's because Cain brought a different kind of offering. And it doesn't really explain but we can guess, we can understand what's going on. It needed to be an animal because the animals were a prophecy. You had to sacrifice a lamb because Jesus would come as the perfect lamb of God. And from the moment that there was the fall into sin, God gave his people signs to expect and look for his coming as the lamb who would be the perfect sacrifice on the cross. There's something else going on. Cain knew this. He and Abel had the same parents. They taught them what was the right way and what was the wrong way. My guess is Cain didn't want to have to buy a lamb off his baby brother. Make sense? What I work on should be good enough for God. It's good enough for me. Why do I have to go to my brother? Why is his stuff better than mine? God won't mind. So there's already some anger. There's already some pride present here between Cain and Abel. And God doesn't like Cain's offering. And it says Cain gets mad. And the Lord says to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your face sad? If you do well, you'll be accepted. And if you don't do well, then watch, because sin is at the door. But he is your brother. Make peace with him and everything will be okay. But Cain doesn't do this. Cain is angry. So he calls his brother to go out into the field with him to talk. 
And Abel thinks maybe he wants to talk about how we're going to arrange this the next time. Maybe even Abel says, you know, brother, you don't have to buy it from me. I don't mind. You can have it for free. Do you think that makes Cain feel better? Cain has given himself over to anger and to hatred. So it doesn't tell us what he uses, but he raises his hand against his brother and he kills him. Right? Have you heard this story before or is this the first time? Okay, I'm glad you've heard it because I would not want to tell this story the first time. It's not a nice story, but it has a lot of meaning to it. Because after Cain sins, he hides the body. And he thinks he's gotten away with it. It's a dangerous world. It could have been an animal. Nobody needs to know. But God says, where is Abel, your brother? And Cain says, I don't know. Am I responsible for my brother? It's not my problem. Am I my brother's keeper, he says. And God says, what have you done? You think I don't know? The voice of your brother's blood cries out from the ground. And because of what you did, you have done, you are cursed. You will have a mark so no one will kill you. But you have to live away from your family, away from the garden. You have to live as an exile. You have to live as the first murderer. It's interesting God doesn't kill him for having killed somebody. But he sends him away. And really that's kind of the end of the story. Cain has children. His descendants are an evil race. They mess up the world horribly, and that's why next time we talk, we'll talk about the flood, when the Lord judges all of them and wipes the slate clean. But for the moment, I want you to think about these two brothers, because I'm sure when they were young, they played together well. They got along, mostly. Brothers and sisters, they always have small conflicts, but somehow, Cain let a poison enter his heart. He was so angry at his brother just for being there. This goody two-shoes little fellow who brings the right kind of sacrifice. We can imagine what thoughts went through his mind. But he fed them. He let that anger and that hatred grow. He didn't say, yes, he's irritating, but he's my brother and I love him. He chose the other way. And I think, above all, we have to take this as a warning. If we give ourselves over to anger, to hatred, well, you've all seen Star Wars, you know where hate and anger lead. But we see here, it doesn't just lead to the dark side. It leads to murder. It leads to death it leads to great pain. Therefore, if we have something against each other, the thing to do is to ask forgiveness of each other. And that's actually very appropriate right here because we're about to take communion. And what you might not have heard in the midst of all the other things we do to prepare for communion, we ask each other to forgive, each, to forgive us. We repent of our sins. We make things right with anyone that has wronged us or that we have wronged. We reconcile. You know what reconcile means? Reconcile is a nice big word that means we come together again. We stop being mad at each other. We make peace. We shake hands. We hug. We make up. Right? We should always come to communion and peace in our own hearts with everyone. It doesn't make sense to come up to communion saying, Oh, how do you get in front of me in line? That's not fair. I should be first. Not the right thing to be thinking. If he cuts in front of us, we should say, well, maybe he needs to go to the bathroom and he needs to go first and I'll, that's fine. I can wait. God, forgive me for being angry at my brother. You see? It's a different way of thinking. We should not come to communion angry. So I urge you all, as we stand up to take communion, make peace in your minds and in your hearts with your brothers and your sisters, with your friends and your enemies, and let us avoid the path of Cain.